Exotoxin, Wikipedia Audio An exotoxin is a toxin secreted by bacteria. An exotoxin can cause damage to the host by destroying cells or disrupting normal cellular metabolism. They are highly potent and can cause major damage to the host. Exotoxins may be secreted, or, similar to endotoxins, may be released during lysis of the cell. Gram-negative pathogens may secrete outer membrane vesicles containing lipopolysaccharide endotoxin and some virulence proteins in the bounding membrane along with some other toxins as intravesicular contents, thus adding a previously unforeseen dimension to the well-known eukaryote process of membrane vesicle trafficking, which is quite active at the host pathogen interface. They may exert their effect locally or produce systemic effects. Well-known exotoxins include, botulinum toxin produced by Clostridium botulinum, Coronibacterium diphtheriae toxin, produced during life-threatening symptoms of diphtheria, tetanus spasmin produced by Clostridium tetani. The toxic properties of most exotoxins can be inactivated by heat or chemical treatment to produce a toxoid. These retain their antigenic specificity and can be used to produce antitoxins and, in the case of diphtheria and tetanus toxoids, are used as vaccines. Exotoxins are susceptible to antibodies produced by the immune system but many exotoxins are so toxic that they may be fatal to the host before the immune system has a chance to mount defenses against them. For this reason antitoxin, antiserum containing antibodies, is injected to provide passive immunity. Types Many exotoxins have been categorized. This classification, while fairly exhaustive, is not the only system used. Other systems for classifying or identifying toxins include The same exotoxin may have different names, depending on the field of research. By organism generating the toxin, by organism susceptible to the toxin, by secretion system used to release the toxin, by tissue target type susceptible to the toxin, by structure, by domain architecture of the toxin, by the ability of the toxin to endure in hostile environments, such as heat, dryness, radiation, or salinity. In this context, label implies susceptibility, and stable implies a lack of susceptibility, by a letter, such as A, B, or C, to communicate the order in which they were identified. Type I toxins bind to a receptor on the cell surface and stimulate intracellular signaling pathways. Two examples are described below. Superantigens are produced by several bacteria. The best characterized superantigens are those produced by the strains of Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes that cause toxic shock syndrome. Superantigens bridge the MHC class II protein on antigen-presenting cells with the T-cell receptor on the surface of T-cells with a particular V-beta chain. As a consequence, up to 50% of all T-cells are activated, leading to massive secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which produce the symptoms of toxic shock. Some strains of E. coli produce heat-stable enterotoxins, which are small peptides that are able to withstand heat treatment at 100 degrees Celsius. Different STS recognize distinct receptors on the cell surface and thereby affect different intracellular signaling pathways. For example, STA enterotoxins bind and activate membrane-bound guanylate cyclase which leads to the intracellular accumulation of cyclic GMP and downstream effects on several signaling pathways. These events lead to the loss of electrolytes and water from intestinal cells. 
Membrane damaging toxins exhibit hemolysin or cytolysin activity in vitro. However, induction of cell lysis may not be the primary function of the toxins during infection. At low concentrations of toxin, more subtle effects such as modulation of host cell signal transduction may be observed in the absence of cell lysis. Membrane damaging toxins can be divided into two categories, the channel forming toxins and toxins that function as enzymes that act on the membrane. Most channel forming toxins, which form pores in the target cell membrane, can be classified into two families, the cholesterol dependent toxins and the RTX toxins. Cholesterol dependent cytolysins Formation of pores by cholesterol-dependent cytolysins requires the presence of cholesterol in the target cell. The size of the pores formed by members of this family is extremely large, 25 to 30 nm in diameter. All CDCs are secreted by the type 2 secretion system, the exception is pneumolysin which is released from the cytoplasm of Streptococcus pneumoniae when the bacteria lice. The CDC's Streptococcus pneumoniae pneumolysin, Clostridium perfringens perfringolysin O, and Listeria monocytogens Listeria lysin O cause specific modifications of histones in the host cell nucleus, resulting in downregulation of several genes that encode proteins involved in the inflammatory response. Histone modification does not involve the pore-forming activity of the CDCs. RTX toxins Type I, cell surface active RTX toxins can be identified by the presence of a specific tandemly repeated 9 amino acid residue sequence in the protein. The prototype member of the RTX toxin family is hemolysin A of E. coli. RTX is also found in Legionella pneumophila. One example is the alpha toxin of C. perfringens, which causes gas gangrene. Alpha toxin has phospholipase activity. Type 3 exotoxins can be classified by their mode of entry into the cell, or by their mechanism once inside. Intracellular toxins must be able to gain access to the cytoplasm of the target cell to exert their effects. Once in the cell, many of the exotoxins act at the eukaryotic ribosomes as protein synthesis inhibitors. Other intracellular toxins do not directly inhibit protein synthesis. These toxins allow the further spread of bacteria and, as a consequence, deeper tissue infections. Examples are hyaluronidase and collagenase. These molecules, however, are enzymes that are secreted by a variety of organisms and are not usually considered toxins. They are often referred to as virulence factors, since they allow the organisms to move deeper into the host's tissues. Superantigens Heat stable enterotoxins Exotoxins have been used to produce vaccines. This process involves inactivating the toxin, creating a toxoid that does not induce toxin-related illness and is well tolerated. A widely used toxoid vaccine is the DPT vaccine, which is usually administered in multiple doses throughout childhood with adjuvants and boosters for long-term immunity. DPT vaccine protects against pertussis, tetanus, and diphtheria infections caused by the exotoxin-producing Bordetella pertussis, Clostridium tetani, and Coronibacterium diphtheriae respectively. Vaccination with the toxoids generates antibodies against the exotoxins, forming immunological memory as protection against subsequent infections. The DPT vaccination may cause adverse side effects, such as swelling, redness, and fever and is contraindicated in some populations. 
Effective vaccination schedules have reduced rates of mortality linked to pertussis, tetanus, and diphtheria but formal controlled trials to test the efficacy of the vaccine have not been conducted. Additionally, pertussis persists endemically and is one of the most common causes of vaccine-preventable deaths. Some bacteria deliver toxins directly from their cytoplasm to the cytoplasm of the target cell through a needle-like structure. The effector proteins injected by the type 3 secretion apparatus of Yersinia into target cells are one example, another group of intracellular toxins is the abtoxins. The B subunit attaches to target regions on cell membranes. The A subunit enters through the membrane and possesses enzymatic function that affects internal cellular biomechanisms. A common example of this A subunit activity is called ADP ribosylation in which the A subunit catalyzes the addition of an ADP ribose group onto specific residues on a protein. The structure of these toxins allows for the development of specific vaccines and treatments. Certain compounds can be attached to the B unit, which is not, in general, harmful, which the body learns to recognize, and which elicits an immune response. This allows the body to detect the harmful toxin if it is encountered later, and to eliminate it before it can cause harm to the host. Toxins of this type include cholera toxin, pertussis toxin, shiga toxin, and heat-liable enterotoxin from E. coli. Type 2, Membrane Damaging Channel-forming toxins Enzymatically active toxins Type 3, Intracellular By mode of entry As exotoxins are highly potent, there has been development in their application to cancer treatment. Cancer cells can be eliminated without destroying normal cells like in chemotherapy or radiation by attaching an antibody or receptor ligand to the exotoxin, creating a recombinant toxin that is targeted to certain cells. The cancer cell is killed once the toxin is internalized, for example, Pseudomonas exotoxin disrupts protein synthesis after cellular uptake. Multiple versions of recombinant exotoxin A, secreted by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, have entered clinical trials against tumor growth but have yet to be approved by Food and Drug Administration. A recombinant diphtheria exotoxin has been approved by the FDA for treatment of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma an immune system cancer. Further testing to improve clinical efficacy of treatment using recombinant exotoxins continues. Some exotoxins act directly at the ribosome to inhibit protein synthesis. An example is shiga toxin, other toxins act at elongation factor 2. In the case of the diphtheria toxin, EF2 is ADP ribosylated and becomes unable to participate in protein elongation, and, so, the cell dies. Pseudomonas exotoxin has a similar action. For example, cholera toxin ADP ribosylates, thereby activating tissue adenylate cyclase to increase the concentration of CAMP which causes the movement of massive amounts of fluid and electrolytes from the lining of the small intestine and results in life-threatening diarrhea, another example is pertussis toxin. By mechanism Extracellular matrix damage Medical applications Vaccinations Cancer treatment